G'day, I'm Greg Vinyl. Welcome to the second of our series on selecting lure colours. In part two we're going to build a little bit on some of the concepts we talked about in part one of the video. So for those who haven't seen part one, please visit our website or our YouTube user channel and watch part one first. Let's start by recapping the concept that we covered in part one of this series and that is the way that light is absorbed by water and therefore the intensity of colours are reduced. So in this figure you can see that the lures that are above the surface at zero metres receive 100% of the daylight and so they have 100% of their colour intensity. But by the time you get down to a greater depth, around about 10 metres or 33 feet under really clear conditions, the amount of light that is received at that depth is only about 22% of what strikes the surface. So the colour intensity of the lures is very, very much lower. So the point that I'd like to make is that it's not actually what fish are capable of seeing, not what their eyes can see, but it's what's available for them to see that's important. So imagine that this black box represents a dark room and that you and I are standing in it. And if I were to ask you what colour shirt I was wearing, you wouldn't be able to tell me. Is that because your eyes can't see the colour? Or is that because the shirt doesn't have a colour? No, of course not. It's just that there's not enough light of the appropriate wavelengths present in the room for your eyes to be able to detect it. So it's, what's important here is what the fish are able to see because it's there for them to see. Now bear with me for a moment or two because I'm going to take you back to your junior high school days and we're going to refresh your memory on how it is that the human eye, or any animal's eye for that matter, detects colour. So you may remember that there are a range of wavelengths of light that are within the visible spectrum for human eyes. So for us it's red through to violet, with red being the long wavelengths and violet being the short wavelengths. And outside of our eyes ability to perceive are the uh, very long wavelengths, infrareds, and the very short wavelengths, ultraviolets. Now when our eye receives all of those wavelengths of light at once, it then makes the interpretation that the object that we're looking at is white. So on the left hand side of this slide we've got a light source that's emitting all of the wavelengths of visible light. And when those wavelengths bounce off of an object and then are reflected and picked up by our eye, then the eye interprets that, that object as being white. Now if the colour of that object is red, then all of the wavelengths except for red are absorbed, the red's reflected, and our eye interprets that, that as being a red object. If it's a green object, obviously all the wavelengths other than green get absorbed, and our eye picks up the green wavelengths and decides that it's a green object and so on and so forth and we can go through the whole colour spectrum but I'm sure you get the idea. Now obviously we don't see objects that are just one colour all the time so our eye has that spatial component as well and can pick up that this is a red sphere with yellow dots because we get different wavelengths reflected from different parts of the object. Okay let's get on to the important stuff. What happens when we shine white light with all its various wavelengths into water? And the very interesting thing we find is that some wavelengths are absorbed faster than others. So the longer wavelengths, like the reds and the oranges and yellows, are absorbed much earlier in the water column than the greens and the blues are. So under perfect conditions, and by perfect conditions I mean uh, oceanic, tropical, uh, sun high overhead, uh, water surface very calm and flat, those are perfect conditions where you get maximum penetration of light into the water. And under those conditions, uh, red wavelengths will penetrate down to around about 10 metres or 33 feet. But under typical conditions, like you'd find in a freshwater lake for instance, it will penetrate to much less. So an average sort of depth for reds to penetrate is around about 5 metres in a clear water lake. Oranges will get down to around 8 metres or 24 feet. Yellows might get down to 15 metres or 50 feet. Greens down to 25 uh, metres or 80 feet and those short wavelength blues will get down to around about the 35 metres, 116 feet deep mark in a really clear freshwater lake. So what does all this mean in terms of how fish can see lure colours? Well let's use this colour for a little guy, I don't think anyone would actually paint a lure this colour, but let's use him as an example. So if we shine white light on him with all its various wavelengths, uh, we can see that those wavelengths reflect off and that's what enables our eye to perceive those colours. But if we drop that lure down into the water column a little bit, so let's drop him down into a freshwater lake to a depth of around about uh, five or six metres, 
and you see that the red wavelengths are starting to be absorbed. So there's no red wavelengths there to reflect off for our eye to then pick up and interpret as a red colour. So those parts of the lure that are red suddenly to a fish appear grey. Now if a fish was down at around the 9 to 10 metre mark or 30 to 33 feet deep in the in the water column sort of depth you'd start to see the oranges on the lure disappear. At around about the 25, 26 metre mark or uh, yeah, about 55 feet yellows would start to disappear and so on and so forth. And when you get down to around about that 37, 38 metres even the dark blues disappear. So the lure just appears grey to the fish at that depth, regardless of what colours it's been painted. So let's put all that information up on the screen at the same time. So you can see the same lure at those various depths looks very, very different because a lot of the colours have disappeared by the time it gets down to, to a great depth. So really it doesn't matter what colour you've painted your lure, if it's swimming around about that 35, 40 metre mark, then all the fish you get to see is grey. Right, well the obvious question is, how can I use this information to help me choose the right lure colour for a particular fishing situation? So it's a case of knowing when a particular lure colour can actually be important, when it can be seen by the fish. And what we've found in this presentation is that long wavelength light doesn't penetrate very deeply, even into really, really clear water under perfect conditions. And that means that red and orange can't be seen at depths much beyond about 10 metres deep, and in most freshwater systems it'll be much less than that. So you should avoid using reds and oranges on your lures if you intend to fish them deep. If they're a deep diving lure, uh, or if you uh, are going to be using them with a downrigger and trolling them deep in the water column, then avoid reds and oranges because they're only going to appear grey to the fish anyway. In part three of this video series, we're going to have a look at how the wind can change the way fish see lures, if you can believe that. It's actually a scientific fact, even though it sounds a bit crazy. But look, go and have a look at our website or our YouTube uh, users channel and, uh, and watch part three. I'm sure you'll get a kick out of it. Alright, thanks for staying with me and uh, good luck with your fishing.